This is about relationships. And as Facebook would put it, it's complicated. My name is Andreas Ekström. I'm an author and a future analyst, and I'm here to tell you why companies want their customers to be fans. But their fans really want to be customers. Do you think this is going to be a happy marriage? What's the most common relationship you have to a corporation? I think you would say customer. Two euros to you, coffee to me, buy three, pay for two. This wasn't hot enough, can I get another one? We have that relationship figured out. But a few companies have been able to turn this regular relationship into something else. Fandom. Let's look at them briefly before I tell you why it leads to a clash of interests. Some say that the Apple empire was built on design. But I'd like to add one more dimension. Pricing strategies. 120 euros for a power cord? Are you out of your mind? It's a genius move to charge so much that you get your customer to think that this thing you're getting is magic. This must be magic. Me want magic. Right? We fell in love. We forgot that we were being overcharged. We're now fans. Way back when, I had an internship with the Chicago Tribune, so I spent some time in Illinois, and I had a rental car, and I saw the IKEA. I took the exit. I just had to get through these revolving doors. I have to know if IKEA in the United States looks exactly like it does at home. It's just a furniture store. Somebody apparently told me a really good, strong story about why IKEA is about me, just because I'm Swedish. I was certainly not the critical customer in that moment. More, I was a fan. Social media is all about this too, of course. Just look at TikTok, not necessarily even a social media anymore, but rather on its way to becoming the world's largest television channel. And how did they do it? Well, they converted the customer into a fan, a fan that's now co-creating all the content and TikTok is not even paying for it. Brilliant move. So far, so good if you're the company in this relationship. Why might the customer get unhappy with this arrangement though? This doesn't happen overnight. This is a four step process. And it begins with that common relationship we have. You know, money to you, coffee to me, we're a customer. By us stopping paying for things, the relationship changes. You're not paying for the Google query. You're a Google user. That word changes everything. It's more collaborative. And also, what can you really do when you haven't paid? If you're dissatisfied, ask for your money back, ask for your data back. The relationship immediately changes. Some companies promote ambassadorship. They do this cleverly with influencers and product placements. And if this works out really well, well, we've created fans. This relationship dynamic will stay the new norm and companies, as well as their customers, are left to figure it out. If you're a consumer, you just want to be really aware of where you are on the four-step scale. If you're a consumer, you're going to be difficult in a good way. You're going to stand up for your rights. You're going to bargain and negotiate. If you're a fan, however, your loyalty, even your loyalty towards yourself, starts to shift. If you're selling something, gathering as much information as you possibly can, that's been a la mode for a long time now for anybody who's selling something. But stronger laws against keeping data are coming everywhere. Plus, everyone hates getting targeted. An interesting ethical question for you might be this. How little can I know about my customer and still remain relevant? So good luck negotiating this. We have a new commercial world that calls for more nuanced roles than just buyer and seller. This trade-off is going to be at the core of all future digital business.